Hi, this is a Grello and Gray tutorial for the circuit counter. I'm Grello, Gray's in the office pushing paper, so I'll be your teacher for this tutorial, which we're calling the button cardi. As you can see, it's the smallest cardigan in the whole entire world. For yarn, I'm using some leftover bugga in the colorway Orange Assassin Bug. I got this from Sanguine Griffin. Really soft and, and yummy. If you want Bug and now, you'll have to get it from one of two companies, which are called Verdant Griffin and Cephalopod Yarns. And this is Orange Assassin Bug. Anyway, let's take a look at our instructions. They're much like the ones in the Circa Manual. You can see it here. But since we're making the smallest cardigan in the whole entire world, I've made the button band just a little narrower. So here it is. It's five stitches wide. As you can see from the instructions, we've got decreases and buttonholes to worry about. Now, you could make a spreadsheet starting with row 1 and ending with row whatever. It's hard to say until you actually do the math, and I just don't feel like it, which is why I'm going to whip out my circuit counter, voila, and we're going to use this today to count and, and work our pattern. So this is the circuit counter. We named its parts after the parts of a pocket watch. So this is the bow up here. This is the face with the numbers. These are the hands, which fit into slots on the dial, uh, the dial or the face, and they're made to stay put so that you can keep them in there and they'll stay even if you bounce it around a little bit. And these are the crowns, which rotate about the face, and they go in either direction, so you can go clockwise or you could go counterclockwise. It doesn't matter. They're made to do both. You've got three different colors to work with, so you've got the blue, the gray, and the yellow, which means that you can keep track of three different counts. Now every count has a starting number and an ending number. You put the crown on the starting number, that's this, the crown, and uh, you can put the hand on the ending number. These are the factory settings, even uh, it's not really a factory, it's our, one of our basements, but this is how it looks when it came to you. I'm going to take them all off and move them over here so that I can place them when I need to. I don't know about you, but the ending number is really important to me because I always forget where I'm supposed to stop. Or I actually do remember, but I don't trust myself to remember, and so I check the pattern over and over, and I did remember, but then I do it again and again, and it's really annoying to me. Anyway, as you advance in your counts, you simply advance the crowns click by click, and you can see it goes around from number to number, and, and it's counting the whole way. You can see that we don't have all the numbers on the dial because uh, when we put them all on, it was really busy and very hard to read, so we decided to think like watchmakers and put every third number on here. I say that there's a click. There is actually a click you can hear. It's kind of a soft click because there are little tiny balls and springs in here uh, that make that sound so that it will stay where you put it. It's not such a loud sound that you'll get dirty looks in the, on an airplane or in the library, or if you do get dirty looks, it won't be because of the counter. Yes, don't try to take this apart. You will lose the tiny balls and the springs inside, which will come flying out the top here, and then it won't work properly, and then you'll be really sad. So just leave it the way it is. Anyway, let's take a look at our instructions again. I'm on row 5 because I've worked rows 1 through 4 here in this teeny little sample that I have. So I'm about to have to do several things, of course, at the same time. The first thing is the buttonholes. I've circled the buttonhole instructions in blue, so I'll assign the blue hand here to the buttonholes, B for blue and B for buttonholes. Uh, it doesn't say how many buttonholes to make. We have an issue with the person who wrote this pattern. But it does say to make a buttonhole every eight rows. And so we're going to put the blue hand on the eight, which naturally comes right before the nine. Put the blue crown on the zero for now. When we start the buttonhole row, row, we're going to move it down here so that it lines up with our hands. So blue hand, blue crown, when they line up, we know it's time to work a buttonhole. So when we work the first buttonhole, we'll start it down there. In the meantime, we'll keep it out of the way up here. By the way, I'm going to say zero, but there's no zero printed on the face. The zero is sharing space with the 36 up at the 12 o'clock position. We've also got decreases to worry about. In the instruction that's circled in yellow, we're supposed to work a decrease every four rows. So let's put the yellow hand on the four, which comes after the three. When we start our first decrease, again, we'll move the crown, the yellow crown, down to here and do our decrease when the yellow hand matches up with the yellow crown. That's how we know it's time to make a decrease. But we're not ready to do that quite yet, so I'll just put it up here for now. How many decreases are we supposed to do? Well, in the instruction that's circled in gray, we're supposed to work the decrease in row 7 and then do it again four more times for a total of five decreases. So let's put the gray hand on the five. There it is, right after the four. That reminds us that we're doing a total of five decreases. 
and we'll leave the gray crown up here at the zero. This count is actually going to start on the zero. Starting at zero might be new for knitters who haven't used the circuit counter before because most knitters start their row counters at one, which makes sense because when you are counting rows, you usually do start at one. But now when you're counting things that you're supposed to do. So let's take as an example our decreases. The pattern says to work a total of five decreases. How many decreases have we done? Well, zero so far. So, zero. We're starting at zero. If you start at zero and advance your gray crown every, every time you work a decrease, pretty soon you'll end up out here with the gray hand matching up with the gray crown. That's how you know that you've worked your fifth decrease, and that's how you know it's time to stop decreasing. Or you could do what I did before the circuit counter, which is just to spread out the knitting on the couch, see if you can find all the decreases, count them all, lose track, count them again. Uh, not quite as fun as, as clicking to the five. Now that we set up the circuit counter, we're ready to go. We've got the blue count tracking the rows between buttonholes. We've got the yellow count tracking the rows between decreases. And we've got the gray count here tracking the number of decreases. At this point, we're done with the hardest part, which is setting up the counter. Once you figure out how to do that, all you have to do is click when you're supposed to click. And if you've ever used a row counter, it's second nature to click something after you finish a row. So with our counter, what do we click and when? Well, we click the blue and yellow crowns, that's this one and this one corresponding, after every row, because with blue and, and blue and yellow, we're counting rows. With the blue, we're counting uh, the rows between buttonholes, and with the yellow, we're counting the rows between decreases. So counting rows, we're going to click it after every row. But the gray count is different. We click it only after we've done a decrease, because we're using the gray crown to count the number of decreases we've done. So let's knit and see how this thing works. I've never knit on camera before, and uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes. We're about to start row five, which is the first buttonhole row. So I'm going to work a buttonhole in this row. Oh, let's get the blue count crown ready. I said we were going to put it down here on the eight when we were going to work our first buttonhole because we always work a buttonhole when the blue hand lines up with the blue crown. And that's what we're going to do now. So we're getting it in the game and putting it on the eight to make our first buttonhole. Now, my mom taught me how to knit when I was about 9 or 10, and she taught me to throw, so I am a thrower. The good thing is, I'm the fastest thrower in the whole entire world. So watch me work row 5. Do my buttonhole here. Now, there's my buttonhole, and I'm going to work the rest of the row lickety-split. I don't think I'm ready for prime time on the uh, knitting on camera. There, I just finished the buttonhole row, so now what do I do? I just finished it, so I'll move my blue crown back to the one. There we are on one. When I get to the eight again, I'll know it's time to work another buttonhole. So now I'm going to work row six from the pattern. This is a nothing to see here row, just the wrong side row. there. I just finished a row, so I'll, I'll advance my blue crown one click. What I'm doing here is counting the rows between buttonholes. Now that I'm ready to work row seven, let's take a look at our instructions again. This is my first decrease row, so I'll put the yellow crown on the four. Remember I said we were going to work the decrease every time the yellow crown was on the four. So I'll put it on the four right now. I'm getting it in the game. We're going to work our first decrease and we have the matchup of the hand to the crown. That's how I know I'm decreasing. And I'm going to work a decrease right now. Here's row seven. I'm 
using uh, doing an SSK here for a slip slip knit decrease. Okay, just finished a row, so what do I do? I give the blue crown and the yellow crowns a click forward because I just finished a row in which I'm counting rows with these two counts. Now I can't go past the four, so I'm going to go back to the one. Click it back to the one, move my blue crown up one. And now I, I know I'm counting both the rows between buttonholes and the rows between decreases. Also, whoa, I just worked my first decrease. I want to keep track of that. So I advance the gray crown one click. Now at a glance, I know how many decreases I've done. I have to glance behind the yellow crown here, but I look down and I see the gray crown there and I know I've done one decrease. Uh, and and it, there it is. It's easy to see. So here's row eight. It's another uh, nothing to see here row. It's the wrong side row as shown in the pattern. All right, there's row eight. That's a massive buttonhole for this size of a, of a Cardi, but we're going to just ignore that. Okay, just finished a row, so I'll give the blue crown and the yellow crown one click, counting both of those rows. Now watch as I keep working. In the days of yore, before the circuit counter, I would have made myself a spreadsheet, numbered all of my rows, and then made notes to myself as to what to do on every numbered row. Then I would have spilled coffee on it, and uh, it would uh, get spindled, and then I would have lost it. Not anymore. Now I just knit straight from the pattern and I let the circuit counter keep track of my repeats. She tells me what to do and she tells me when to do it and the way I've set it up here, the when to do something happens when a crown lines up with its matching hand. So it's a good tip off that it's time to do something uh, that's specified in your pattern when your, your, your crown and, and your hand are matching up color to color. So I'm going to just work a few rows and uh, I'll pick up the counter after every row and click what I need to click and you can see how it works. I don't even need to know that this is row 9 anymore because I'm actually not going to keep track of the rows by number. As long as I have the circuit counter here I know when I'm supposed to do what and so I, I don't even actually care what row it is. But if you care this is row 9. Now we see that I'm on the fourth here. My, I'm matching up my yellow to my yellow. So that's how I know it's time to work a decrease on this row. So on this row I'm going to work a decrease on the side seam over here. Just finished a row, so I'm going to click these forward. This can't go past the four, so I just go clicking right back to one. And having worked a decrease, I move the gray crown over, and I can see at a glance that I've done two decreases now. finished a row so I click my blue and my yellow crowns and up oh, now we can see that my blue hand has matched up with my blue crown it's time to work another buttonhole this is a buttonhole row 
so I will work a buttonhole. Just finished a row, so I'm going to click my blue and my yellow crowns forward. Blue is at the limit, so I'm going to send the blue back to one. Move the yellow crown forward. I'll work a couple more rows just so we can see how this develops, and then we will call a halt to the smallest cardi in the world. So very close together, don't worry about that. Finished a row, so I'll click my blue and my yellow crowns forward. Can you see how this works? Now this row, I have the yellow hand matching up with the yellow crown. That tells me it's time to work another decrease. So I'll do that decrease row, and then maybe we'll, we'll stop. Just finished a row, and so I'm going to move this forward, although I'm at the four, so I go back to one. Move the blue crown forward, and I just worked another decrease, so I click the gray crown forward. I've now done three decreases. How many do I have to do? Five, because there I have my hand on the five. It reminds me how many decreases to do, and I'm three-fifths of the way there. Here's the smallest cardi in the whole entire world with some decreases over here, some buttonholes in the button band, and I wasn't actually keeping track of what row I was on because it did not matter. All I need to know is when to do things, and the whole pattern is written as a series of repeats, as all patterns are if you boil them down to it. So let's recap. The first thing you do is identify the things that you'd like to count. Here it was rows between buttonholes, rows between decreases with the yellow, and the number of decreases with the gray. Second, you assign a color to each thing. Uh, you could use a crayon. I use my child's crayons from time to time to circle the things in the pattern if I feel like it, or you could just remember. Just put a little uh, star next to each thing and uh, color code it. Third, you place each hand on the ending number for each count. Stick them in the slot. They stay put. Reminds you when to stop each count. Fourth, you place each crown, that's these things here, on the starting number for each count. This might be the hardest part. Yeah, I like to put them up here at zero until I need them, until I'm actually doing a buttonhole or doing a decrease. If it makes more sense to you to do it a different way than I've described here, by all means you should do it that different way. We designed the circuit counter to work any number of different ways. It's versatile on purpose because there are as many ways to do things as there are knitters. Just do what makes sense to you. And as always, if you have any questions, please contact us on our website. Uh, we love to get questions and we respond just as soon as we can. I'm Grello, and on behalf of Gray, thanks for watching.